Hey folks, my name is Daniel and welcome back to the finance channel. I hope all of you are doing absolutely great out there as always here today. Boy oh boy do we got a lot to talk about. Steve Ehrlich, the CEO and co-founder of Voyager Digital just went and spoke for nearly an hour about Voyager, what's going on, their future plans and responding to what's been going on here over the past couple of months when it comes to recent business development. So in this video, I want to take you all through exactly what he said, give you a bit of a summarized version, but more importantly, take you through the potential implications this has for Voyager as a platform, a stock, and a token. We'll also uh, go through some updates that have gone down today with the stock and the token, but that'll be after the summary. So if you end up enjoying this video, please consider hitting that subscribe button, folks. And yeah, with that out of the way, let's get into it here. By the way, check out the first link in the description down below to uh, an in-depth analysis and introduction to Voyager if you uh, are unfamiliar with it. So here we have it. These are uh, my notes that I took. Again, this was over an hour with Mike the Investor, again, a good friend of mine. We spoke... Uh, at least a couple months back at this point about VGX, a big supporter of it. But a lot of interesting things were mentioned. And, and again, we had Steve Earle kind of starting off about 2021 and how great of a year it was for Voyager and that they've grown their funded accounts well over 20x over the span of at least 11 months since we got that update of 1 million funded accounts mid-November. At this point, probably closer to 25x. But the company's grown so significantly, but Steve Earle remains kind of forward looking saying that 2021 is going to be an even better year for them and again expanding their platform and really focusing on their main constituents which he says are shareholders token holders customers and employees in no particular order just focusing on all of those and making kind of everyone happy in the sense of improving the platform onboarding customers and just growing the company as a whole in terms of payment processing he did uh, again say that this is the future not just for the crypto space but for voyager as well and in, in that they've uh, again acquired Coinify back in the uh, kind of back half of the summer in August. Um, and they've again started to integrate this with uh, USIO, which as we know, this is a, a, again one of the kind of payment processing companies that Voyager has been uh, working with. Obviously acquiring Coinify for the, the crypto side of this and obviously the Mavs as well, which that was a huge partnership as we know. Integrated kind of payment processing with the Mavs is something that they see in the very near horizon and just kind of continuing to expand that partnership with the Dallas Mavericks. And Steve Erlich actually did mention that they've already started to add benefits of using the Voyager app to their fan base, which is with no doubt a big deal. Mavs, one of the biggest teams in the NBA from a, uh, again, supporter point of view and having Mark Cuban at the helm there, obviously someone who's heavily involved with cryptocurrencies and highly respected in the crypto space, it's with no doubt a very, very positive partnership for Voyager, for the Mavs, and kind of moving forward here, it's with no doubt very, very exciting, not just from a payment processing point of view, but just kind of to see where this may end up going. Now, looking at the Voyager loyalty program, uh, Steve said that the team is continuing to, uh, again, try to make this better, the best version of it possible. And uh, again, the, he said, quote, we're not where we want to be yet in terms of where this program is and where they want it to be moving forward. Obviously, being based off of ownership of VGX, the better this program gets, the more demand essentially gets translated to VGX. And hopefully, I guess the hope is you should see price appreciation, but alongside that, some phenomenal rewards. And again, using the Voyager platform, and he did point to a debit card integration happening when that does end up getting launched in the near future. He did focus a little bit more on the debit card in a bit of a moment here, which we'll go through. Now, we got to keep in mind, Voyager has grown so significantly to a point where they're a multi-billion dollar company. But I, I, I think a lot of people forget the fact that Voyager is just 18 months old in terms of how long they've been in business as a crypto brokerage, this is a very, very young company. They had 35 employees back in January of 2021 and have grown that to 275 as of, uh, again, a couple of days ago. So the company has grown so substantially over the past 18 months. And I think a lot of people actually forget that, you know, this company was in existence a couple of years ago. 
and they've really managed to take and make significant strides in becoming such a dominant name in the crypto industry and competing with the likes of Kraken and Coinbase and a variety of the other crypto companies out there. Now, Steve did say that they plan on having right around 500 employees by the end of June, but he did mention in the back half of the interview that it is a, a bit of a difficult time to hire people in today's environment uh, with, again, people not really wanting to work at this point. So, again, they continue to grow, they continue to hire. This kind of 500 number will probably be, you know, customer support, engineers, marketing staff, kind of just spanning kind of across Voyager as a company and allowing them to continue developing as, as a platform, as a company and expanding into a variety of different industries. Now, this is actually quite interesting. He, he did talk about Voyager's strategy and that the, one of the things that made them stand out back at the beginning of 2021 is the fact that they had a lot of altcoins, a lot of coins that people generally couldn't gain access to unless they went through a very, very difficult process of signing up for a certain exchange to buy a certain token. There wasn't really a one-stop shop for altcoins. And what Voyager did is they implemented a lot of the altcoins onto their platform, a good example of this being Dogecoin, where a lot of people just went to Voyager because they had Bitcoin, they had Ethereum, but they also had the likes of Dogecoin, recently Shiba Inu, which was with no doubt uh, another big deal, and even something like Sandbox, right, which had, over recent times has gone up significantly in value. but. Voyager was also one of the only platforms that allowed you to buy it. So you just kind of look at the strategy and Steve mentioned that Coinbase has actually took an, taken notice of this and started to implement Voyager's strategy. We just recently had them launching the VGX token on the Coinbase and Coinbase Pro platform and you see them continuing to follow this strategy. So uh, again, Voyager. They're taking the proper steps. The big guys are kind of copying them at this point and you know, that's something that we can expect. But it is with no doubt a positive seeing the big dogs following in Voyager's footsteps. Alameda Research, this was a partnership that, or I guess an investment uh, that Alameda made into Voyager, from my understanding, right around $75 million. And uh, Steve mentioned how this uh, continues to build uh, Voyager's partnership with FTX, which as we know, very prominent name in the cryptocurrency space, and will allow them to continue developing staking rewards, as well as derivatives. Now, this is fascinating in the sense of crypto, this really focuses around crypto swaps, futures, and even potentially options. And the fact that Voyager is already a registered broker dealer is a big, big deal in allowing them to, you know, again, allow consumers to participate in these aspects of the crypto space once they do end up getting launched. So uh, again, expect big things when it comes to futures and options as potentially being a, a big differentiator for Voyager when the time comes and obviously something to look forward to. And, and again, Alameda Research, the, that investment that they made into Voyager, obviously one of the individuals high up there at Alameda being the founder of FTX, it continues to build this relationship and continues to strengthen Voyager from the perspective of, again, a, a new product launches here. Now, looking at the debit card, this is also a, a very, very exciting step for Voyager being able to use USDC, at least once it does end up getting launched within the next little while here, and earn 9% on a yearly basis by just simply holding the money there. That's in and of itself is a, an unrivaled value proposition, which is not really seen elsewhere in the industry. Now, Steve Ehrlich did say mid-January is what we're expecting at this point in terms of starting to roll out the debit card and it will be rolled out throughout the quarter. He did mention that at this point, registrations have totaled a couple hundred thousand in terms of how many people have actually registered to, uh, again, I think it's like a pre-registration for the debit card. So it, again, we know they have over a million funded accounts and it's great to see at this point that already a couple hundred thousand, whether that be 200,000, 300,000 have signed up. I think it showcases Voyager's customer base and the fact that they're very, very engaged. And, you know, this is going to be a big testament to once Voyager ends up expanding into loans and stocks and credit cards, are people going to be willing to use their products? If we see positivity from the point of view of the debit card, we can expect a lot of engagement from the perspective of new product launches, as I mentioned previously, like stocks, like futures, like options, like a variety of different things. So 
We'll see. This is Voyager's kind of first venture outside of the, the crypto space. And hopefully it does end up going well with no doubt in my mind. Uh, as Steve mentioned again, uh, this is a huge customer acquisition tool. Again, unrivaled in the industry at this point. And in addition to that, he did hint that the Voyager loyalty program will be heavily debit card integrated in that there will be a lower and a higher tier at some point in the future. And again, integrating the debit card into that, he, he did also mention that we can expect an update on this within the next four to six weeks. So the priority at this point, launch the debit card, and then integrate it into the program. And he did say uh, the original 10 basis points that you would get as uh, as of the first tier for the loyalty program for every transaction that you make is too little and that they're gonna give more than this in the future. So again, that, that that's good, right? Getting rewards by just holding USDC in your account, but also getting higher rewards for going out and spending it. He did talk about Particle, which is the company of, a lot of co-founders of Voyager also co-founded Particle. This is Voyager's step into NFTs. So what they essentially do is go out, buy different pieces of art, separate it into thousands of individual particles and allow you to buy those particles. So it's an interesting concept, but what made me a little bit more fascinated is the fact that Steve Verlick said that this is the first step into NFTs and that we can expect Voyager to provide access to many marketplaces in the future when it comes to NFTs, similar to what they do with cryptocurrencies as a brokerage. They connect to many different exchanges, over a dozen at this point, and that allows them to offer a variety of different cryptocurrencies that may not be accessible in solely one place, but since they're connected to so many different exchanges, so many mar market makers, they're allowed to kind of provide a lot of options for consumers and looking at NFTs here, that's kind of what they want. They want to connect to many different marketplaces and allow individuals to buy or sell NFTs, not just in one place, but in many places. Uh, looking at the NWSL, the National Women's Soccer League, again, this is an announcement that we got a couple of weeks ago, or at least a few days ago, a week or two ago. This is a major sponsorship with no doubt, partnering up with the entire league, being the official crypto broker of the NWSL, or NWSL, sorry about that. And Steve did own up to the fact that there's been a lot of negativity when it comes to this partnership in that a lot of people are saying, hey, Steve, not a lot of people watch the NWSL. Why are you partnering with them? And kind of Steve kind of responded with that immediately after Voyager partnered up with the NWSL, we saw Crypto.com go out and sponsor a, a single team just a week later. So we'll see what ends up happening. A lot of t a kind of emphasis here was put on a kind of evening the player or playing field uh, with women and men and just kind of focusing around that aspect with Voyager as a company and partnerships. So we'll see what ends up happening. I'm optimistic that Steve and Pam Kramer, the chief marketing officer over that the company, know what they're doing. But uh, again, it's not going to be a needle mover, in my opinion, but it does offer exposure to a, uh, again, a completely new space and a, a new demographic that potentially hasn't been explored before uh, with, again, the female population. Brian Brooks, this is exciting here. Uh, we talked about this one yesterday. He did uh, go up in front of Congress, absolutely wowed millions of people around the world with his ability to very confidently speak about cryptocurrencies in a way that is very, very easy to understand. It, it, just his articulation is something that I have not seen before. So phenomenal to get him added onto the board of directors over at Voyager. And Steve mentioned uh, getting more regulatory experience is kind of the main reason behind that. And is another step to uplisting to the NASDAQ, which we know that's a big deal. Getting the stock uplisted to the NASDAQ, more liquidity, Again, much easier to raise money from the perspective of Voyager, kind of building that reputation as, as a company. So those are kind of the main points. Uh, we did actually get a little bit more here. I had to go uh, to another page talking about Europe. March 2022 was their original timeline. Steve did say they might miss this. So keep that in mind. He, he's being a little bit more realistic when it comes to timelines at this point. He did get into a, a lot of kind of or people kind of hated on him back earlier in uh, kind of 2021 uh, because of the fact that he gave unrealistic timelines and wasn't able to hit them. So I think he's realized that and he said, all right, let me be a little bit more conservative, give some more time. And 
you know, not get into a situation where I'm having to miss timelines the same way Elon Musk set ridiculous quarterly goals back in 2018 and kind of shifted that again into the 2020s here. So again, it's not ideal if they do end up missing this, but he did say that it will happen within 2022. And in my opinion, again, if it doesn't happen in Q1, Q2 is almost a given at this point. So he did actually talk about how it's a real pain in getting there and how they have to literally build a, a like a duplicate system to be in Europe, which is with no doubt expected. But again, they got to do it well and it will happen, right? This is you know, we kind of think about it. This is a very, very short time frame. I've just been covering Voyager for a year. And since then, they've announced partnerships with payment processing, with staking, with a bunch of new cryptocurrencies going from like 30 or 40 when I started to cover it to over 70 at this point. And again, whether it be stocks and Alameda Research and FTX, so much has gone down. This is still a very, very short time frame that we're talking about. And it's not like Voyager isn't growing. So if it takes an extra month or two to get to Europe, I really don't care. As a long-term investor, I say, all right, if it takes a couple extra months, it doesn't matter because they continue to grow within the United States, which at this point is the biggest market that they can kind of attack. Looking at the desktop app, Steve said within Q1, it'll get launched. And he said that they will definitely beat that. Again, emphasizing on the, the point that he doesn't want to give out a date like January 15th and miss it. So he's saying Q1, but definitely in Q1. So again, expect that in Q1 and expect something different than, let's say, trading view, which, which he said is um, something a lot of platforms do. Uh, so expect something unique, I guess, is, is where he's kind of going with that. When it comes to customer support, expect a live chat and phone line in 2022 now he did originally say that this would happen by the end of 2021. And it is something that I want them to do, right? I, I want more customer service when it comes to Voyager. And I want people to be able to get a response within 24 hours, right? I, I want that. I think everyone wants that as again, customers is the way Voyager makes money. The more engagement Voyager has as a platform, the happier customers are, the more money Voyager makes, right? That, that's the bottom line. And if you're a shareholder, that's what you want. If you're a token holder, you want people to be happy. More engagement is potentially more, uh, again, involvement in the loyalty program. So you look at all of this, more customer support is a benefit for all. Uh, talking about the phone line, he did say it is easy to steal funds uh, when it comes to a phone line, but they're focusing on kind of that and minimizing risk when it comes to kind of a, a phone line in general. So again, the whole idea of customer support, they just got to get on it. As I mentioned yesterday, it's difficult. It's almost like a cat and mouse race where Voyager continues to grow so significantly that any strides that they make in, uh, in improving their customer service essentially isn't enough to overtake the growth that they're seeing as a platform. So potentially part of that 500 employees that they plan on having at the end of, um, at the end of June may be a significant increase in customer support here. So I'm optimistic, but uh, again, it, it's not a huge problem. All the platforms are facing it. And a lot of the time what you see on Twitter is just people potentially being a little bit mistaken in that they made a problem. It isn't Voyager's kind of fault, like let's say a deposit not going through. So in that obviously being on their end with their bank. So again, we'll see what happens, but they need this. They, they need it. They need it. They need it. They need it. That's all I got to say at this point. More transfers and rewards, uh, again, coming very, very soon. They continue to hire blockchain developers and expect a yield on Avalanche and Solana. Uh, again, hopefully within the coming quarter. That's kind of what I got from Steve. Lastly, finishing it off, 2022. It's going to be big. He's very, very excited and uh, said that he doesn't expect any crypto winter to happen throughout the year in that there have been a lot of strides made in cryptocurrencies that make it very, very different from what we've seen in previous cycles and that there's a lot more adoption. And it's, you know, this is kind of me speaking, there hasn't been an explosion in price the same way we saw an explosion in price back in, let's say 2017, 2018, right? Cryptos have been consolidating for nearly all of 2021. So, Again, we'll see what ends up happening, but if cryptos don't go absolutely crazy, if Bitcoin doesn't go well over 100,000, in my opinion, there's no real need to worry 
about a massive cryptocurrency bear market. And I know that can come back and kick me in the face uh, within the next few quarters, but that's something that I'm willing to say. At this point, I'm feeling confident. I'm confident that they'll expand on their product offering and customer count, which Steve Ehrlich says are some of their top priorities. Uh, that's kind of a secondary priority to uh, security and customer support. But again, all of these are things that benefit all the constituents of Voyager, whether it be stockholders, token holders, customers, or employees. Lastly, everyone would be pleasantly surprised in a couple of weeks' time when Voyager goes out and announces their results for essentially uh, the fourth quarter, right? I, I know in their fiscal year, it's the second quarter. We're talking about October, November, and December here. Revenue, funded accounts, growth at the company, something that I'm really, something that I'm really, really looking forward to getting and will with no doubt cover on this channel when the time comes. Now, one final update that I do want to take you guys through. Voyager stock, phenomenally today alongside the price of bitcoin vgx token at around three dollars fifteen cents again doing phenomenally alongside this kind of breakout that we've gotten with the price of bitcoin we talked about it yesterday fifty thousand dollars is a big big area of support and it's good to or i guess resistance uh, but it, again it's good to see them break through that we'll see what happens here but if cryptos potentially go back into a bit of a more bullish sentiment, expect uh, good things to come to Voyager from the perspective of growth, revenue, and thus potentially a stock price and token price. One last thing, a lot of people are looking at their brokerages and say, kind of seeing Voyager at 100% loss, potentially being delisted. Don't worry about this. Voyager is going through a bit of a change on the back end when it comes to kind of merging their voting shares and their common shares. So. This should get fixed within the next couple of days. Keep in mind, it's Christmas Eve tomorrow. The markets are closed. Take a bit of time, spend it with your family. Obviously, Voyager can, okay, obviously if you're in the United States and you have the Voyager app, spend all day on the Voyager app. I can't do that, but take a bit of time off and uh, obviously we'll uh, kind of recoup when we, uh, after the Christmas holidays, anyways. Thanks everyone so much for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. Um, and yeah, I'll update you guys when uh, something else happens with Voyager, whether it be a new interview, a new press release. So make sure to subscribe to stay tuned. I'm very, very excited to see what 2022 brings for Voyager as a company, although it is over a week away at this point, but you know, it's an exciting time. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.